I would have to say that this is a movie that's so unique that it was definitely a jaw dropper. It's a jaw dropper and it's a unique film and it's also a very like, uh, I would say it's a violent movie without the violence. Hi, my name is Shree and let's waste some time together. So I was planning a lot of Spooktober reactions for this month and my uh, YouTube suddenly gave me a notification saying, hooray, it's your channel's birthday. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Let me go and look back all the videos that I've made so far this year and when I went back I realized that I've reacted to over 50 movies on this channel that's insane like I can't believe I've watched so many wonderful movies with you guys so I was looking at the list and I figured hmm where do I rank them all do I love them all equally or are there a few movies that I love more than the others so I thought let me pause the horror reactions for a bit and make this fun aside by ranking every single movie that I have watched on this channel so far. Now this was a hard list to make, believe me, because there's not been a single bad movie that I've watched on this channel thanks to your recommendations. So I've decided to make four categories of this tier list based on my personal opinion. That's right, this is purely subjective, I'm not a movie critic. So the first tier is the S tier, which is I've watched it 200 times since, which is exactly what it means. I have revisited these movies time and time again after making my reactions. Then there's A, the jaw dropper, which is, yep, my jaw was on the floor when I watched those movies. Then there's B, which is super fun, and C, which is not rewatchable. Now that final category does not mean that the movie is bad. It's just that I haven't revisited them for personal reasons after watching it for the first time. Maybe they were too gory, maybe they were too uncomfortable. The point is, this list is neither objective nor is it factual. My tier list is gonna be different than yours. I'm only human and what I like or dislike in movies is for my personal reasons only. So with all that out of the way, let's get into it. I also wanna mention that I haven't put like sequels of the film uh, that I've watched, like for example, like Back to the Future or I would say Star Wars, I would uh, consider them as one entity just to like save time and just to save space in the tier list. So sit back, relax, and let's go. Let's enjoy this tier list. So should I start from the top or from the bottom? I think I'm gonna start from the bottom. And at the bottom corner, we have Forrest Gump. Now this movie was, well, just like anybody who saw my reaction, they know how much I really enjoyed this film. This was such a delight. It was a feel good movie, but at the same time, Time, you guys in the comments, my subscribers really enlightened me about uh, people like Forrest Gump who were enlisted in the military, the McNamara project, for example. I had no idea about it. So it, it has a fair bit of history to it, but at the same time, it's also like something that gives you optimism and it tells you that even though you might have some difficulties growing up or you may have some setbacks in your life, you should not let that hold you back. So it's really a very uplifting story, a very motivational story. So, so where I put Forrest Gump would be, I would say, uh, is it C, not rewatchable? I don't think so. B, super fun, A, jaw dropper, or S, I've watched 200 times since. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put it in the S tier. I've watched this movie around three, four times, especially for that scene where he just ran from the bullies across the football field and everybody just noticed his talent of like really running. That's when, you know, the iconic line was said, run forest run. I couldn't let it go from my head. It was so hilarious. And it was like the pivotal moment where Forrest Gump was born. It was truly his iconic brand of like being a fucking marathon runner was born so I, I that moment itself is something that makes me want to watch this movie again and again it gives me a lot of motivation to just kind of get up and just go and to just run away from bullies and to run towards uh, any kind of goal that I have so I'm gonna put this in the S tier next up we have the Batman now this is the 2022 version the reason why I made this reaction is not because any of you 
guys uh, recommended it to me, but I really wanted to watch something new on this channel. Mostly I watch something that's from like the early 2000s or the 90s or the 80s or the 70s or even the 50s and 60s, but never something that's released this year. So I really wanted to check this one out. And where I'm gonna put this is I would say it was, uh, I would say this was a, a jaw dropper. It was jaw droppingly good. I wasn't expecting a lot from a new Batman movie. I mean, I feel like we've gotten a Batman movie every two or three years, so I wasn't expecting a lot from it, but what I got, it over exceeded my expectations. It was a detective thriller. It kind of reminded me of The Dark Knight, but also at the same time, it was a very unique film on its own. It was it stayed true to the comics, which I really appreciated, and I think it's something that I can watch again and again, but most most importantly, it really, uh, it really gave me something that I was looking for in a Batman film and more. So definitely this is a jaw dropper. Next up, we have Scream. This is an iconic film and I would have to put, this is really hard guys. I don't know where to put this. Is it gonna be a jaw dropper or what? I've watched 200 times since. I have to say, I've watched it over seven times ever since I watched it, but I don't know, like, um, I would have to say this has a lot of rewatchable element to it, so I'm gonna put it in the S tier. I found it to be a very hilarious and unique film and a very self-aware slasher film, which made it really unique in my opinion, and I really enjoyed it. Everybody uh, killed it in their roles, especially the duo killer. Uh, it was just so much fun. It's a very unique film and it it's definitely something that you can watch with your friends over and over again, just like they were watching horror movies inside the, inside the film itself over and over again. So definitely a unique thriller. Next up, we have Saving Private Ryan. Now this one is very hard. This was a jaw dropper. This is something I can watch 200 times this is was a super i won't say it's a super fun movie that it doesn't def, it definitely doesn't belong here but i think i'm going to put it in the not rewatchable category because of the first uh, i would say 15 minutes of the film it, those 15 minutes where the soldiers really get uh, hell rained on them where they really like they they face the worst atrocity ever and they kind of lose their limbs they lose everything they lose their sanity it, it's just such a powerful scene and it's one of the best scenes ever but it's something that I cannot subject myself to unless I'm really ready for something like that it's mayhem it's carnage and it's a devastating uh reality thrown at our faces and it was something that i did not expect but it's it's uh it's a military film it's an army movie so i was like okay i'm going to be seeing uh world war ii events but not <laughs> in such a way where it really it stayed with me it did that those scenes stayed with me uh, and i think it would be very hard for me to revisit them again but this this movie definitely like deserves to be in the jaw dropper category but i won't watch it again unless like i'm i don't know i'm looking for some pain <laughs> so there's that next up we have misery now this movie was just so much fun and it was a like a really cool unique look at this like female villain and not only just a villain the very dark demonic presence without being supernatural she was an absolute beast of a human being i won't even call her a human being but she was a real monster and james khan also killed it i would say i can't watch the, or rewatch this film because of that like like that hammer scene, the sledgehammer scene, you know which one I'm talking about, to the ankles. So I'm gonna put it in the jaw dropper category because this is a fantastic, scary ass movie, but uh, I don't think I'm going to be re-watching this anytime soon, but it's definitely a jaw dropper. Next up, we have Aliens. Now, what can I say about Aliens that hasn't been said already by everybody on this planet? This movie is a fantastic mano a mano death match between two mothers and it is one of the most unique films I've ever seen and the action scenes in this movie is fantastic. Uh, I'm considering Aliens because I've watched Alien but I 
couldn't make a reaction to it. I mentioned it in my aliens reaction. My my uh, reaction became like corrupted, and I couldn't really edit it or post it. But both the alien and alien move aliens movies are just so rewatchable that I have to put them in the S tier. I've watched uh, the first movie over ten times. I've watched Aliens over twenty times. It's so enjoyable, and it's. Uh, it's a movie that I haven't seen being replicated uh, in modern screen, and nobody has remade this film, thank God. There might be more Aliens movies, I don't know, but not something that has this dynamic of like Ripley and uh, the the girl and the alien and versus Ripley. It's, it's oh my God, it's a mindfuck, and I love this movie. I love this series. Next up, we have Pulp Fiction. <laughs> Oh my god. When I first saw this movie, I actually have to admit, I don't know what the hell I was watching. This movie is cut and edited in a way where you don't know which is like, which is the story that's happening at present and which one already happened in the past and what's gonna happen in the future. And this movie has so much like uh, mystery to it. They don't tell us what's in the suitcase. They don't tell us many of the information, but there are scenes in this movie that you can just watch over and over again. And I. I have to admit, even though I haven't watched this film over 200 times, I've I've gone to, on YouTube and rewatched some of the scenes, especially the scene where uh, like Marcellus Wallace and uh, Bruce Willis's character they kind of escape that hellhole shop that they were stuck in, and the uh, the other scene where uh, Marcellus Wallace gets hit by <laughs> Bruce Willis's car. There are scenes that I've gone back and watched, and I have to say that this movie falls in the super fun category. This is a movie that you don't necessarily have to watch in a linear fashion. You can just go and revisit some of the scenes by themselves. They just stand out from the rest. My favorite scene in Pulp Fiction is the one where I think Seinfeld shows up and shoots, uh, I would say, uh, Samuel L. Jackson and John Travolta and he hits nobody. He has this like big ass fucking gun and like he shoots nobody. His aim is so fucking bad and it's one of the most hilarious moments in the movie. I've gone and rewatched that scene on YouTube and I definitely have to say this is a super fun film. Next up we have Jaws. Now where can I put Jaws? Where do you think? I definitely have to say this one was a jaw dropper. When I first watched this film I didn't expect anything except just a shark on a beach or a shark in the ocean or something. But what really stood out were the characters in this film. The character development of this film is insane. When you go to movies like this expecting some thrills, some fun, some, you know, some popcorn entertainment. But I left with like really caring for the three main characters in this film, especially the one who had the boat, the character who owned the boat. He I don't know what it was, but he really broke my heart and his death was just really, I don't know, heartbreaking for me and I just... Uh, it's a movie that I will remember for a very long time. It really exceeded my expectations and it is definitely a jaw dropper. Next up, we have Close Encounters of the Third Kind. I don't know where to put this. This is such a good film. I would have to say that this is a movie that's so unique that it was definitely a jaw dropper. It... I... Uh, I knew that this was an alien movie. I knew from the from the poster itself, but this was just more than an alien invasion movie. This movie was an experience. They didn't give us like this like ambush, like fucking uh, I wouldn't say like um, uh, Armageddon type deal, but it kind of makes you sit there and stare at these aliens and kind of interact with them just like Arrival did, you know? And it's not exactly painting anybody in a bad light. It's not painting the humans in a bad light, neither is it painting the aliens in like a dark, disturbing, like, you know, Mars attacks light, you know? So I would say it's a really good movie. It's a jaw dropper. It's a one of a kind unique film. And it's something that I can actually watch 200 times since, but I haven't exactly uh, rewatched it more than three times 
times, I would say three or four times. So I would definitely put it in the jaw dropper category. Next up, we have The Naked Gun. This movie was so freaking hilarious. It is, I would have to put it, it's not exactly a jaw dropper. It's not like a unique movie. I would say it's a unique in its comedy, but it's definitely, it definitely has rewatchable elements to it. But I would put it in the super fun category because it's, it's so silly and fun fun and ridiculous that it's just every time you would watch uh, The Naked Gun, you just have a good time. You're gonna have a, a bunch of laughs. You're gonna have a detective that has no idea what the hell he's what the hell he's doing. And I'd have to say this one, this movie has been replicated and imitated by many other films. Uh, like I would say Ace Ventura, Pet Detective or Ace Ventura, the first movie. Uh, it definitely has some Naked Gun, gun elements to it and I would say this movie is super fun and very unique and very cool and Leslie Nielsen became an instant favorite and I would have to say that I cannot talk about Leslie Nielsen without talking about Airplane so I'm gonna use this first before I use Die Hard I'm gonna get to that in a second Airplane is just so cool it's such a funny fucking ridiculous movie I would say it has some of the most rewatchable elements. So I'd have to say I've watched this over 200 times. This is a movie that I didn't think that I could connect with. I thought, okay, this is an older movie. The humor may not land with me. I thought it's, it's the kind of comedy that someone who is much older than me might get and I won't. I was very wrong. I The humor landed with me perfectly. It's a movie that I would say is is immortal in its comedy. It's it's uh, dad jokes, the movie. <laughs> you know? It was such a fun film and I laughed so much. I didn't expect to laugh this much. And Leslie Nielsen, I heard before this, had done serious roles, never like this kind of like deadpan, like straight face comedy. And I think he struck gold with this role because I enjoyed The Naked Gun, but I fucking adore Airplane. It's a one-of-a-kind film. It's a unique movie of its kind. And there have been several remakes of this film, let's face it, and they were not good. They could not compete with the original. Okay, next up we have Die Hard. Now, Die Hard is a super fun film. Of course, it's a popcorn entertainment, but I... I hesitate to put this in the super fun category and I'd have to say I would put it in the jaw dropper category because this movie really surprised me. When you hear the words die hard, you think of like something that's just action packed. You're going to get something like the raid in a building, you know, but this movie had humor. This movie had the thrills. This movie had this great cat and mouse sequence between Bruce Willis and Alan Rickman. Uh, the, the hero was one upping the villain. Uh, the, the, the villain had everything planned, but his plan was just going wrong because the hero is just, just too good at his own game but also at the same time we have a vulnerable hero that's not exactly superman here it had it had all the elements for a good film and it surpassed that with just being uh unique I would say. So it's it's definitely a jaw dropper because I didn't expect I didn't expect this much experimentation with this film. It, this movie could have been a cookie cutter uh, thriller with the hero trying to escape the villain's game, but it took one step forward, it one step ahead and kind of made it a movie where you get the unexpected and I really I really appreciate it. I really enjoyed Die Hard. Die Hard 2 was fun too. And Die Hard 3, I haven't reacted to it because I've actually watched Die Hard 3 on TV once before Die Hard 1 or 2 and I really, really love the dynamic between Samuel L. Jackson and Bruce Willis. It's one of my favorite trilogies ever so I'm gonna put it in the jaw dropper category. Next up we have Full Metal Jacket. Now this movie was fantastic. Anybody who's seen my Full Metal Jacket reaction knows how I feel about it but because of the first sequence, especially what happens to Leonard uh, Gomer Pyle, the, the bullying that he endured the first half of the, in the first half of this film and what happened afterwards you know exactly what happened i have to say i have to put it in the not rewatchable category simply because of this like relentless bullying and this like this descent into madness that Leonard goes through and i just can't subject myself to that again because it hurt me personally i've been 
in Leonard's shoes. I've been there. I've I came out of it uh, stronger with uh, role models and uh, like you know the the guardians that helped me. My teacher who sh who showed a tremendous attention to me. Who my mother who uh, who changed my school because of the bullying. So I came out of it. I would say a stronger, better person. But Leonard was not so lucky, and I just it breaks my heart just to think about what could have been. So this movie is definitely a, a, an amazing film, but it's not something that I would visit, I would say, uh, willingly, unless, you know, I just want to uh, re- I, I just want to remember the film again, so. Next up, we have The Shining. This is a fucking masterful horror film. It is a one-of-a-kind film, and it's a movie that doesn't really answer your questions right away so it definitely is a movie that falls in the s tier which is i've watched 200 times since i've watched it over uh i would say 20 times because i still don't get most of the uh, most of the elements in this film especially by towards the end of the film when like those like characters just showed up the guy with the mask and what the hell was going on in that hotel can somebody please explain it to me many of you guys have uh, your own interpretations and you've shared it with me in the comments and that's what makes this movie so unique because everybody has a different uh, interpretation of this film including my own which won't match yours and I think that's what makes this movie so rewatchable it's such a cool and unique masterpiece that it goes beyond on just like a generic horror movie, a haunted house movie, so it definitely falls in the rewatchable genre. Next up, we have Speed. Speed was a really fun action film, something that uh, is just I would say it's really cool and the bomb under the bus is a very I would say it's a it's not exactly like unique and like not been done before, but it's just so much fun this film especially when the action begins, which I would say it begins right away with the elevator scene, that I have to, I must admit, I have to put it in the S tier, which is I've watched it 200 times. It has a fantastic rewatchable element to it. It's a fun action movie. It it ha it gets your adrenaline boosted. It gets you going. It's, it's something that keeps you on the edge of your seat. Even though you know what happens, you still want to watch this again and again. So I have to put it in the S tier. Next up, we have... Jurassic Park. What can be said about Jurassic Park other than I've watched it over 200 times since. I made the biggest mistake of watching Jurassic World before Jurassic Park, but the thing is like when you uh when you grow up in the era of remakes, you can't avoid them. You know, when you go to the theater, the thing that's playing is a remake. So I watched Jurassic World not knowing anything about Jurassic Park and I liked it, but when I watched Jurassic Park for this channel, I'd have to say that this movie blew my mind at how good it is there is character development especially with Alan especially with the the, the creator of the park who really t said I, I fuck this park in the end uh, the the dinosaurs themselves who were evolving and who were reproducing even though they were all females and the villain and the villain character who was kind of like you know was on the path of betrayal but really fell flat on his face literally this is such a fun movie and I would have to say it's it Ben's genres too. It's not just like an action movie or a creature feature, but it's also a uh, subtle horror movie, especially the kitchen scene, especially the scene in the forest. It it definitely has a lot of horror elements to it. And I have to say, it's one of the most unique and fantastic uh, blockbusters that I've ever seen. Next up, we have 2001 A Space Odyssey. This is a movie where I have to commend the movie for like really changing the landscape of science fiction in movies it it, it the, f the fact that this movie was made in the 60s blew my mind i actually thought when i saw the title 2001 i thought it was a movie made in 2001 the effects the scenes in space where the uh the hostesses were walking and like really like walking upwards the gravity defying stunts that they were doing how the supercomputer and how he betrayed the astronauts everything about this movie is just perfect i have to say i'm going to put it in the not 
rewatchable category simply because there is a sequence towards the end where there is like the the ship goes into like this portal and there is a lot of like flashing lights and vivid imagery and with me if you've watched me on this channel before you know that i there's something with flashing lights that i can't like i can't re-watch again i would watch it for the first time but i'd have to really shield my eyes over and over and i don't like doing that flashing images really does something to me it does something in my brain i feel like uh if i watch it in like the big screen i'm gonna throw up uh, and this movie, by the end of it, has a really long sequence of flashing image and like uh, this uh, photosensitive uh, like aspect to it, which uh, it hurts my brain. But it's not something that is uh, makes it a bad movie. It's not. It, it, I'm not putting it in the not rewatchable category because it's a bad movie, but because of my own personal reasons of not being able to tolerate flashing images, I won't be uh, revisiting this movie. And even if I revisit this movie, uh, I would say. Um, I'd have to shield my eyes during that sequence or I have to close my eyes when I'm in the theater. But otherwise, this is a fantastic film. This is a movie that really defied expectations and it really defied it, its own time. It, it's really way ahead of its time. Next up, we have The Thing. The Thing is a movie that was recommended by you guys and also a friend of mine and I knew that it was a horror movie. I just didn't know that this movie was a whodunit mystery inside a horror movie, inside a creature feature, which was a fantastic film. I think it's one of the most unique horror movies I've ever seen and I have to put it in the jaw dropper category. You know, like I can't help it. It was so good and it's a movie that can also be watched 200 times to find out the answers but it's a complete jaw dropper because of how unique it was. I wasn't expecting a lot from this movie and I got more than I asked for so it's definitely uh, it's it's a fucking fantastic classic. Next up we have the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This movie is so much fun. It's a jaw dropper and it's a unique film and it's also very like uh, I would say it's a violent movie without the violence. Uh, it does definitely have some scary elements to it but it's not like a gory film. I thought it was gonna be a very gory movie and I'd have to say I have to put it in the super fun category simply because it gives you what you ask for. What's in the poster is what you get. It's a family full of crazies and it's uh, it's the final girl escapes, of course, but it's a movie that really, uh, it, it doesn't disappoint and it's just super fun to watch. You can like visit it anytime you uh, want to and you can watch it with friends. So it's definitely, it's, it's definitely a fun movie. Next up, we have the Indiana Jones series. Now I watched Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark and the Temple of Doom. I loved both films. People thought that I might hate the Temple of Doom because it has some elements that paints India in a negative way, but I think they were misunderstanding this the second film too. It, it, India was not painted in a negative light, but this cult that was kind of uh, masquerading as worshippers of Kali were kind of deceiving the people. So I would say it's a uh, I would say it's a super fun movie. It's a super fun series. You're never going to be disappointed. You're never going to be bored. You can revisit it. Many times I, I the, the reason why I'm not putting it in like the 200 times since or uh, jaw dropper is because I have to see more of the uh, Indiana Jones films like I would say uh, the recent movie was Kingdom of the Crystal Skull I haven't seen that and another one with Sean Connery that I haven't seen so I'm super excited to check that one out next up we have Halloween this one is a very special movie to me because this is the movie that kick-started the reaction genre Genre on my channel. I wasn't expecting to do like reactions on my channel before. I thought maybe I'd be good at it or bad at it. Let me just see how it plays out. And it really like it really jump started this whole niche in my channel. So it's definitely a special movie for me. And I'd have to say it is a super duper fun horror movie that you can watch anytime you're bored, anytime you want some thrills. And it's not exactly like an over the top bullshit slasher movie. It's very like, it's very straightforward. There is a killer, they're targeting these like three women in a house and uh, the, the, town the townsfolk are really oblivious to something like this because they've never experienced a serial killer in their neighborhood. So everybody has like their doors open, their windows open, and it really kind of rattles 
this this little suburban like this colony so it's a really fun movie and i can't wait to check out more halloween movies for my channel next up we have scary movie now i watched this movie right after watching scream and i had such a fucking fantastic time it's uh i would say it's one of the best spoof movies i've seen i've seen a lot before i've seen vampire suck and disaster movie and all this stuff but scary movie it's unique in its own way it's definitely something that you can watch 200 times since and i have to admit i've specifically watched some scenes on uh youtube just to, just for shits and giggles because it's such a cool movie it really it 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 brightens your day it's just it's stupid it's silly and it is super duper fun i'm gonna put it in the super fun category i love this movie so much but i have to see scary movie two three and four to really form a broader opinion about the series so i'm looking forward to more scary movies Next up, we have Star Wars. Now, where do I fucking put Star Wars? This is going to be so hard. I've watched four, five, and six, but not one, two, and three, which I'm looking forward to a lot. And I'd have to say this movie is a fucking jaw dropper. This entire series, from the very beginning when I watched A New Hope, all I could say about this film is how ahead of its time George Lucas and his team were in making this film. The, the special effects were fucking crazy. I couldn't believe my eyes about what I was seeing. So I could just only imagine somebody watching this in theaters in the, in the 70s and being like, holy shit you know and the story itself is i would say it's uh kind of a it's very game of thrones like so it's kind of like a movie that's not exactly science fiction but also fantasy so it blends these two uh these two genres really well so it, it was really a jaw dropper for me i couldn't believe my eyes at what i was seeing so it's definitely a fun and unique film it's definitely it it can be rewatchable but it's a jaw dropper for me because i couldn't believe of how good and entertaining and ahead of its time it was. Next up, we have The Green Mile. The Green Mile was a surprising movie for me. I, I didn't expect what I was going to watch. I thought it was going to be a drama. It was going to be about a, a person who may or may not deserve to go to prison. And it's about prison guards and about Tom Hanks. So I went into this movie blind and I'm really, really glad I did because it fucking exceeded my expectations. And not only that, it gave me something that I was not expecting, which is a a different genre of a film entirely. When I saw the Stephen King tag tied to this film, it's like it's it is based on a Stephen King novel. I should have expected some supernatural elements to it, but I didn't expect supernatural fantasy and this like tear jerking this this masterpiece. And this is a movie that's like three hours long but I didn't feel a single second of it. It's very rarely I can say that. Like I've watched masterpieces like The Irishman and I felt the hours, you know, but with this movie, I was surprised that I was sitting in one spot for three hours and I didn't, didn't, I didn't feel the passage of time. It's so good. And I'd have to say this is a jaw dropper. This is a fucking fantastic movie. It's a one of a kind film. I don't think there is another movie like this. It cannot be replicated. It's so, so unique. And and it's one of my favorite films that I've ever reacted to. Next up, we have First Blood. Now, when I hear the word Rambo, I've heard this word many times before as like a pop culture reference. Anytime someone is acting tough or people are like kind of either mocking them like, oh, you want to be Rambo? Or if someone is complimenting someone, they use Rambo. So when I heard that Rambo, the first movie is called First Blood, I thought, okay, this is going to be like an action movie. It's going to be like the hero that's misunderstood and he has to like escape the, the police and escape everybody. But the final scene of First Blood where he 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 bears his soul when when John Rambo talks about how he's being treated after coming back home it not only broke my heart it kind of it educated me about the reality of about the realities of Vietnam vets who came home and were spit on who were disrespected who were not taken care of who had PTSD and they ha they were kind of left alone to fend for themselves so this movie i would have to say is not only a jaw dropper but i've rewatched this film over 10 20 30, 30 i would say 40 times 
simply because of that final scene. And not only have I rewatched this film for the action and for the final scene, but the villain of this movie, the 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 sheriff, the chief of police, he is a fucking maniac and I would say he's one of the most loathsome villains ever, which make this which makes this movie even better because of the actors and because you just get this great story and this great message behind it. And it's something that someone like me, an outsider, a non-American, uh, finds a lot of value in because I didn't know about how Vietnam vets were treated after the war. And it's, it's, oh my God, it's a fucking fantastic movie. Next up, we have Rear Window. When I watched Rear Window after watching Psycho, because you guys recommended to me uh, this movie and many other Hitchcock films, I was expecting like this thriller, this like, okay, Hey, he is gonna spot something because the poster has like this camera and the, the, a person with a camera and someone like looking behind from like a window but I didn't expect how hilarious and sharp this movie was in terms of dialogue and how much it kind of subverts your expectations and uh, enhances uh, a woman's role in a film because women are usually like the girlfriend character or the love interest or someone in the background usually in like an older film but Hitchcock really doesn't give a fuck about societal norms. He makes like uh, he made uh, the 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 girl in Psycho the 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 main character fucking die. And in this movie, the women are the the characters that really take matters into their own hands because the protagonist really can't do anything about it. He is injured. He can't you know go and uh, investigate the 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 missing person by himself. So his girlfriend and I think his. Uh, I would say his massage therapist is the are they are the ones that take matters into their own hands and solve the case for him and it's such a fucking fantastic movie and I have to say it is a super fun movie but also a jaw dropper I don't know I'd have to say this is a super fun film because the next movie that I'm gonna pick not these two is the jaw dropper and you know which one I'm talking about it is Psycho. Psycho was a fucking jaw dropper of a movie I did not expect uh, like this kind of thriller going in and not only that this movie is so ahead of its time I know I've said this about many movies here but this movie truly was ahead of its time it talked about mental health it talked about mental issues and like issues that are overlooked by other people like especially like split personality or multiple personality or psychopathy like these are the things that I don't expect uh, it being in the discussion in the 60s but here not only is it highlighted but it's also the main topic of discussion for like 15 minutes by the end of the film they have an expert explaining to the audience what is going on and I find and even though it might not be appreciated by the audience of today because uh, mental health mental issues in DSM-5 it's kind of like a common uh, topic in movies and in discussion but beforehand like people from the 60s may not discuss these things that often so I really appreciated that final scene that kind of explains to everybody what the hell is going on with normal mates and I find it to be a very unique film it's a jaw dropper and it is a, a movie that is an instant classic. Next up we have Apollo 13. Now when Tom Hanks is in a movie I immediately know this is gonna be a fun film but what I really appreciated about Apollo 13 is how much the movie taught me about this uh, mission but at the same time I appreciated how much you guys taught me about the Apollo 13 mission. I talked with so many people in my comment section that had family members Sorry, there's Diwali going on in the background, so don't mind that. Uh, that had family members who worked in the Apollo 13 mission, who worked at the 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 who worked at NASA, who worked in the military, and all of you guys really ed educated me about this mission. And the movie itself was just so much fun. I love the dynamic between the three main characters, the three astronauts, and also behind the scenes how much work the people had to put on the ground team to bring these three people back home. I, I really appreciated this. I, I loved it so much. I would have to say it is a movie that I can watch over 200 times, but at the same time it's a jaw dropper and it's also super fun. Definitely rewatchable. So I'd have to say it's a film that is a fucking 
jaw dropper. It's a movie that I haven't exactly watched over 200 times, but give me time. I'm actually going to because I loved it so much. Uh, it, it's a film that I've watched over about three or four times by now, so I, I really, I really love this film. You know what I have watched over 200 times? It is the Terminator series. I've watched Terminator 1 and 2 for, for now. Terminator 3, 4, I don't know for sure. Many people are giving me mixed messages. I should watch it. I should not watch it. I don't care, but the first two movies are just so much fun. And they have this rewatchable element to it where at first we have Arnold Schwarzenegger as the villain and then we have him as the hero. We have this like cyborg who is like a fucking serial killer. That it's, it's a fucking slasher movie. It's a horror movie. It's a survival movie. And an amazing female lead in Sarah Connor. She is a badass. This movie is fantastic, not just for Arnold Schwarzenegger, but also for Sarah Connor's growth, how she evolves from this like very meek and mild waitress to this like strong, uh, like I would say general in a military, you know? I, I fucking love The Terminator so much and I've watched it, I would say over 200 times, I can't even count. Next up, we have Black Hawk Down. Black Hawk Down really taught me about this mission uh, that I hadn't, I didn't have any idea about. And not only that, I really appreciated the, 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 this, this mega prolific cast that this movie had of like amazing actors that I know today, you know, they, they are like common names, they're popular names, but beforehand, I would say they kind of like just started out in this film and it, I really appreciate this movie. The only reason I would put it in the not rewatchable category is because there are certain scenes in this film when like the Black Hawks really fall down and they end up in this like this crowd, this mob of people who really want to kill them. Th those scenes are just very, very horrific, very painful and very real. Those are scenes that I cannot like go back and revisit them just for like entertainment, you know? This movie I would say is a very powerful movie and a very important movie, but it doesn't have a rewatchable element to it unless you really want to like go through that again. It kind of really solidifies the point of like what these soldiers went through when they were like stuck in that place uh, where like this entire city wants you dead basically. So it's really a powerful movie and it's a really important movie. I would revisit this if I'm Forced. If someone tells me, let's watch Black Hawk Down together, I'm like, oh, okay, fine, sure. But it's really something that stays with you and it's gonna keep you up at night. So yeah, definitely not rewatchable for me at least. Next up, we have Tremors. I fucking love Tremors. I love Tremors because of the, the, the chemistry of the two characters, of the two main characters. And not only that, at how fucking entertaining it is, the and how unique it is. The, the movie is basically earthquakes. It's just earthquakes and sandworms trying to get to you. And I love it so much. It's, I would say it's a fucking movie that you can watch 200 times. It's, uh, is it a jaw dropper? I wouldn't exactly call it a very unique concept, but it is super fun. It's a movie I've actually watched more than two, three times, but it's something that's just like, you can play and you're, you're not gonna be bored. It's a movie that's entertaining, by the very end. And let's just say this movie gave me a reason to crush on Kevin Bacon. I've been following on Instagram ever since like a crazy person and I don't regret it. Just a few movies left so I'm gonna go through them quickly so you guys can also stop getting bored of me. Uh, next up we have Goodfellas. This movie was a fucking fantastic movie. When it had, I, as soon as uh, Joe Pesci said funny how I knew this was gonna be a unique fucking movie, and I'd have to say this movie is a fucking entertaining masterpiece and it is, uh, is it uh, an S tier movie or is it just super fun? I don't know, man. This is going to be so hard to pick. Fuck. <laughs> I'm just going to keep doing this. Um, this is definitely a movie that I have rewatched a couple of times. So I'm going to put this in the I've watched it 200 times since category. <laughs> this movie has dialogue that's so fucking super smart and super sharp. And it's a movie that really kind of like 
shows you this other side of the mafia. Usually the mafia is portrayed in like this positive light sometimes or in a very cool light when you watch something like Legend uh, from the craze basically. It's like, yeah, the craze were not good people. We don't have to see them in like this badass fucking light. So Goodfellas really does a good job of showing you what they're really like and the family dynamic and how they fall apart is just, it's a fucking amazing reality show basically and I love it so much and the performances are fucking fantastic. Next up we have The Exorcist. Now I actually desperately want this to put this in the not rewatchable category because it's a movie that is so scary I don't want to visit it but I can't I really can't do that. I, I actually would subject myself to watching this film. I would say it is a fucking jaw dropper. This movie is a jaw dropper. I mean let's face it it was so good it's such a unique horror and not only that um it doesn't really pretend to be anything other than what it is it is a movie of possession it is a movie where people who doubt themselves have to really prove themselves and it's a movie about faith it's a movie where you really have to believe in yourself to really uh overcome the dim demons who are like not only haunting you but the demons inside of you your own your own shaken faith and your own broken family dynamic where you actually have to address the fact that do you want to let this poor girl die or do you want to make sure that this is the family that doesn't break because of this evil entity and i really loved it so much it's a jaw dropper it's it's horror elements are something that really affected me on a personal level uh it definitely is not something that i would re-watch right away but it's a movie that i will watch again just to learn from it's a it's a great horror movie it's something that is just it's it definitely has rewatchable elements to it i don't know i should i put it in the 200 times since category i'm just gonna put it in the jaw dropper category for now just because i haven't watched this over three four times because you know i like sleeping at night so definitely it's a jaw dropper man it's a fucking fantastic horror movie next up we have predator when I went into Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger, when I thought, okay, this is going to be an action movie. This is going to be a military movie, whatever. But it didn't really have to try as hard as it did. But I really appreciate how much work they put in the character development of the Predator, the design of the Predator, uh, his like stealth mode and the, the, the background behind it, the lore behind it. There's a lot of uh, things about the Predator that I had no idea about. Like it hunts for sport, it collects trophies, it collects skulls as trophies uh, for its own planet to prove itself that it is the ultimate Predator. And it has like a code, you know, it's not going to attack you unless you attack it first. It's a very respectable warrior that's coming to fight you and I love the fact that uh, it, they've put so much work into the backstory of the Predator and not only that, I love that they put these like macho alpha dudes against this one guy to just to kind of hammer the point that even though you have like the most like the, the, the best of the best of mankind in this in this forest, they are no match with this alien creature and they took this like really gigantic person uh i believe he passed away because of an accident uh you guys told me in the comments but it they really they 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 did their work they did their homework like arnold schwarzenegger itself is a huge person but against this predator who is like seven feet tall even he looked like a miniature person in front of him and it was just so scary because someone like us would not you know, would not survive this. But if Arnold Schwarzenegger couldn't, like, couldn't survive this unless he had, like, he, unless he would strategize how to kill it, it's, it, uh, we have no hope. So I loved it. I think it's a definite, uh, I would say, uh, jaw dropper. It's a jaw dropper movie. I enjoyed the shit out of it and I would definitely rewatch it again. I haven't exactly seen it 200 times, but I've definitely seen it a couple of times and it's a fucking jaw dropper simply because of how cool and unique the Predator is. Well, well, we've come to Back to the Future. Now, this is something that I said, you know, I'm going to talk about this as a trilogy, uh, as, a, as the whole series, and you know where I'm going to put this, right? I'm going to put this in the S tier. Let's face it, this is one of the most rewatchable 
all fucking amazing trilogies I've ever seen. This is a movie that, like, <laughs> I love time travel movies, but I haven't seen something done exactly this way, where it's fun, it's hilarious, it has great chemistry between the main characters, and it has a villain that the actor killed it. He played Biff, Buford, fucking Donald Trump so well <laughs> that it's a movie that I can watch just for Biff. If there's a movie, if there's like a prequel trilogy of just Biff Tannen and his like misgivings, I would watch that. I would watch the shit out of Back to the Future and I'm, I'm so thankful that they haven't remade this movie yet. It's a fear of mine that they would spoil this movie if they remake it because this, this trilogy, it's ahead of its time. The special effects are amazing, but the set design, the set design in the 1800s and the 2015 that they imagine is fantastic. Everything about this movie is just perfect and the script is so tight. It is without a doubt one of the tightest scripts I've ever seen done in film and I love it so much. It's one of my favorite trilogies that I've ever reacted to on this channel and I've revisited this on my own over a hundred times I think. Next up we have The Shawshank Redemption. The Shawshank Redemption is a movie that is just like, I would say it's something that is very powerful and it's very painful. There are some of the scenes that are very disturbing, so it definitely is not something that you would watch on your own, but it's a fucking jaw dropper. It's a movie that blew my mind, especially the final scene, the reveal of what um, Andy was doing, you know, the main character was doing in his free time, what the posters meant, what his like hobby, the rock hobby meant, everything just tied so perfectly and it has this this, the satisfactory ending about these like prison guards and this like, oh, the, the, the villain of this movie is such a horrible fucking character that I wanted to kill him on my own and that means that the actor did a fantastic job and Morgan Freeman the narrator of the film is just a, a brilliant character and I love him and I love I love Tim Robbins in this movie it's a fucking jaw dropper the story itself is unique and one of a kind and it's a movie that I definitely watch again and again but it's an absolute jaw dropper next up we have Blade Runner Blade Runner wow I that's it the the wow element of this movie is a fucking jaw dropper. I mean, when I watched this film, I thought, okay, science fiction, alternate reality, the future, dystopia, this and that. But the world building of this film, the, the visual element of this movie is something to marvel at. You look at it and you are just amazed at the work that was done behind the scenes, the look of it. Um, I, I, you guys told me that this, uh, the, the background is not CGI, but matte paintings, which actually blew my mind. This is not CGI, which really, I, wow. I mean, it's fantastic. It's a jaw dropper. My jaw was on the floor of not only just the world building, but also the, uh, the mythology behind this company that created these replicants. And the backstory of the replicants too is just unique. Uh, there's a lot of work being done about these, like the, the, the buildup of these replicants and what they go through and why are they behaving this way. It's just fantastic. Usually the villain, the, the, the villains or the, the, the evil characters, the anti-heroes are usually just like people who have been wronged. But here there's like the void Kampf test, I think it's called. Uh, there's a lot of things that has been done to develop these replicants, to develop these replicant characters. And it definitely has a movie, it's, it's definitely a movie that can have sequels upon sequels. And I wouldn't mind it. I can't wait to watch Blade Runner 2049 again. I love that film too. I would consider uh, like reviewing this as a series and not just the Blade Runner movie itself. So it definitely is a jaw dropper. Next up we have a nightmare on Elm Street. Now, holy shit, where do I put this? Do I put this in the jaw dropper? Do I put this in the super fun? Do I put this in the not rewatchable? No fucking way. Do I put this in the I've watched it 200 times since? You know where I'm gonna put it. I've watched this over 20, 30, 40 fucking times simply because of Freddy Krueger. The motherfucker is scary looking. And not only that, they built up this villain really well. The, the backstory is really good. How he died and why he's back is really good. And the ending itself left you in this like 
open-ended scenario where you don't know exactly if Freddy Krueger dies or not or if they are still stuck in the dream. So I really liked it, but the scenes in itself, the nightmare scenes are, they are nightmare inducing, let's face it. And they're shot in such a cool way. And I'm really, really thankful to you guys in the comments for educating me about how they uh, shot these scenes. Uh, and the reason why I want to watch this over 200 times simply is to learn from it. If I want to be a filmmaker in the future, I... I cannot believe the amount of work they put in making the uh, the bed fountain scene, in tilting the, the the entire room upside down to make it look like the person was just you know stuck to the wall and all that shit. The the bad, the behind the scenes work of this film is fantastic. It's something that I can watch over and over again, and and I will just I think I will keep discovering new stuff in this film. So I really loved it so much. It's one of my favorite uh, horror movies to date, and you know definitely deserves the S tier. Next up, we have Spaceballs. I'm very glad that I watched Spaceballs after watching the first three Star Wars movies because the jokes about the merchandise and the jokes about the Star Wars franchise and the, the references to it really made sense. And it's, I would say it's a super fun, hilarious spoof. I love Scary Movie, I love Spaceballs, and Spaceballs is definitely a spoof movie a parody movie done right. It doesn't exactly go overboard with the stupidity and the ridiculousness. It's actually a pretty smart spoof movie where it kind of like breaks the fourth wall in an interesting way. And at the same time, it's not exactly like over the top, like ridiculous and annoying movie. It's actually pretty, I would say it's pretty smart in its own genre. So it kind of is a jaw dropper, but I'm gonna put it in the super fun category because it's a movie that you can just play and just enjoy anytime you want. Next up, we have Rocky. Of all the movies and the movie series I've reacted to on my channel, I think I've praised the Rocky series the most. I love the dynamic between Rocky and Adrian. I love how much of an optimistic and like motivational a movie this is. And not only that, the characters, uh, Polly, Adrian, their growth, and you know, like the, the contrast between Polly and Rocky, and Rocky's internal growth, and Apollo's growth in this film is phenomenal. And it's a movie that I have to say, outside of my reaction, I've watched over 200 times. I love this fucking movie. I love I love this series and I can't wait to watch Rocky 3, 4, 5, and 6. It's not only just like a boxing movie or a sports movie. It's a movie where you kind of uh, learn about Rocky and learn about these characters and you kind of grow with them. The, the movie feels oddly real you know like it doesn't feel like a movie it feels like people we know from down the street from down the block it's people we've grown up with it's people who have made something of themselves and it's people who don't make anything of themselves and just leech off of others you know i'm talking about Polly here but it's just it's a movie that just feels real and I love it. I love how raw it is and I love that it's not exactly over the top or cheesy or melodramatic or anything. The pe I, I believe these characters. I believe Rocky, I believe Adrian, I believe Polly and I believe everybody I, and I fucking love Mickey. Many of you guys say that I'm gonna be, you know, end up as Mickey in the end or in my reactions feel like Mickey making these reactions and I kind of see that you know, I'm kind of a little crazy like him, but he's one of my favorite characters and Rocky is ultimately one of my favorite series. We've come to the final two of this entire list and I'm gonna talk about American Psycho first. <laughs> I don't exactly know what to say about this film. I made the mistake of going into this film thinking it's a horror movie, thinking it's a slasher movie or something. The moment I ex accepted that this is a comedy, this is a black, black, hilarious, disgusting, ridiculous comedy, I enjoyed the fuck out of this film. In there was an instant switch in my brain and I was like, fuck this, I'm not going to think too much about this film, I'm just going to shut off my brain and have some fun. And I had so much fun th with this movie, uh, it's, it's a super fun ridiculous uh, satire and, and uh, this like look at like rampant capitalism and someone who is just so completely cut off 
from the real world. Someone who is not of want, he has everything he needs, and he feels entitled to everything and everybody. People are commodities, people are objects to him. His, it, not only that, his disgust for humans versus his admiration for a business card is just... Oh my god, this movie is fucking hilarious. It's one of a kind and it's super fucking fun. Finally, we have Poltergeist. Now, this is one of the most uh, recent reactions I've done on my channel for Spooktober. Uh, I loved the fuck out of this film. I... Oh my god. What can I say about Poltergeist? I didn't expect to be this scared and this uncomfortable going in. I thought it was just gonna be a generic, like, haunted house movie but it's fucking amazing. And I didn't know that it was a Steven Spielberg uh, project. He produced it and Toby Hooper from Texas Chainsaw directed it. I had no idea going in, so I was very pleasantly surprised. I would have to say that towards the end of the film, not towards the end, I would say uh, the second half, uh, the ending of the second half is filled with the sequence a flashing imagery where like you know they're trying to find Carol Ann and they're trying to bring her back and the door opens and then there's like this vivid flashing light and it really hurt my brain for some reason like I said about 2001 a space odyssey flashing imagery do does something to me and I, I was really uh, I was really not happy at the fact that I had to keep doing this I had to shield my eyes towards that flashing imagery. It's just made me feel like I want to throw up. So it's not a movie that I would be watching again simply because of that, you know, flashing images. Uh, otherwise, this movie, if I can just like shut my eyes for that sequence, I can like watch it again and again. It's a really good film. It's a really scary film. It's a very unsettling movie, but it's an uncomfortable movie to watch, especially personally for me, that flashing image just really, it's not something that I will willingly visit again. Unless if I'm like, if I'm in a theater and I watch that much of flashing lights for like 15 solid minutes, I'm going to throw up. I'm going to throw up all over the floor. So not a very pleasant sequence but a definitely an amazing film. So that's it. That is my tier list of all the movies I've watched so far on this channel. This was so much fun to make and I hope you enjoyed watching this with me. I know yours will be different from mine and that's the fun of it. Now I pose the question off to you. What is your favorite movies tier list? You can send me your own list by DMing me on Instagram at Nation, and I will pick the top 10 lists and post it on my community tab. You can also play with my tier list and change up the order by clicking on the tier maker list in the description box below. You can also go and visit my reactions here. I've reacted to a ton of amazing movies from the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and 2022s. So be sure to check them out. Be sure to follow all my socials too. And if you like more of these videos, you can let me know in the comments below by posting recommendations for reactions or any further videos you'd like to watch. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I didn't waste your time. See you next week.